Welcome to the Caribbean Food Network. I am your host and chef, Chef Eric Marshall, Chop Champion, and a celebrity chef for a lot of the stars. So today, we're gonna to do something easy for you. I wanna teach you, teach, teach you how to make easy meals that's really convenient. It's not hard to make whatsoever. Someone comes over, they're like, ah, let me cook you something real quick, and we go from there. What we actually have for you today is some lamb, which is right here. I already cut them up. One of the things you really need to do is make sure they get to room temperature because that's how you know it's going to cook evenly and it's going to just be perfect. However you like it. I like mine medium or medium rare. You can like yours a little bit doneer. Some people like it well done. The choice is yours. We're also going to have some asparagus to go with it because that's very simple and easy to cook. And you're going to see how I make it because I'm actually going to use all the flavor from the juice of the lamb to cook the asparagus on this beautiful cast iron. I prefer cast iron because it gives you a nice char and a nice coating and smokiness to your lamb and to the flavor of everything. So just a little product placement so you guys know that I do love you. Yes, my Virgin Island cup, because I was just there, had an amazing event actually at, um, where did I go? The Buccaneer Resort. It was a beautiful resort, had an amazing time, but we're gonna bring all that here now into my kitchen. So what we're gonna do, go ahead, turn the heat on. I like to get the pan a little hot, especially with a cast, cast iron pan, pan, you need it nice and hot so you can get that nice here because this lamb is only gonna take about three minutes each side. Now that is quick cooking and that's what we're looking for. We're gonna get this nice and hot bit of olive oil just to coat the pan. And while that's doing what to do, I'm gonna show you how to make this marinade that I use for my lamb. And it's very simple. So some Worcestershire sauce, however you like to pronounce it. So just to almost coat the bottom like this. Believe it or not, I do put some spicy brown mustard because this adds a little kick to it. A little steak seasoning, yes, on your lamb, a little bit of steak seasoning. It goes a long way and enhances the flavor all the way because we know that lamb is, is just slightly gamey, but it doesn't have that real woody, woody flavor. And I do love this roasted garlic and herb a little garlic on there it actually opens up the flavor even more and this is really all that i have left in here so i need to go to the grocery store and get some more last but not least slap and seasoning now this goes on everything when i say everything everything you can put it on your fish your steak just vegetables we put a nice, nice amount of seasoning because you want flavor. Because this is kitchen vibes right here. We got a vibe in the kitchen. And I just usually just get a, a whisk or you can have a fork because I want to grab things that you have in your kitchen already. Everyone doesn't have a whisk, but you should have one. But we want to just stir it up. And this is what the mixture is gonna look like. But what you wanna do is really just coat, coat your lamb in this marinade. And it doesn't have to marinate for like 15, 20 minutes. But the longer the better. But you can just get your lamb in there. You might wanna make sure it's a nice coating. And I like to mention that lamb is one of my favorite, favorite dishes to make. My favorite po proteins, it is amazing and immaculate. I actually was on Chops and we had lamb on the um, on my show. And believe it or not, well, you have to believe it because I'm a Chop champion, but I did crush it. Look at that. So this is nicely coated, and we're gonna have it sit in here for a little while. 
So check that out. And since we're prepping, I'm going to go ahead and wash this off. Oh, one tip about a cutting board. Always put down a paper towel. It stops the slippage. No slipping whatsoever. Nope. No wet paper towel and a paper towel. Come with me because cleaning is a very, very important part of everything. Like, I always clean off my cutting board because I just had meat on there. Because you don't want people going to your house talking about, ah, I got sick. You don't want to get sick because there's such thing as cross contamination and you do not want that whatsoever. So, what we're going to do now. Just cut up our asparagus. Just get our asparagus ready. The pet, the pot is still getting hot. I can see a little bit of smoke, smokiness from it. When you see the smoke, that's how that's how you know it's just about ready. I'm gonna cut our asparagus. I like to tell mine. Tell means you're just gonna cut off the end of the asparagus. Cut off the tail. You can use this for another dish if you like. Believe it or not, it is good. You can make a puree from it. But we're just going to keep this ready and waiting. It looks like we're going to go to our pan, actually. And make sure you have your tongs prepared. Because you're not going to be using your hand. You don't have chef hands like I do. I can usually put my hand in the pot and then just grab things out. And this is the cast iron pan. So you're going to have to make sure you have something. You can see the smoke coming from it. We're going to turn it down just a bit. But this is actually what we want. And you're going to see how quick this actually cooks. And there's going to be a sequential order of how you put your lamb in your pan. First in, first out, or first turn. So we're going to go ahead and put our lamb in. Look at that. And you know something's happening when you hear that nice little sizzle. So sequential order, one, two, three, four. And as you can see, this one is actually a little bit bigger than the rest. So it's going to take a little bit slightly longer to cook. It's also it's all about the thickness of your lamb. And a nice tip about your meat, however you're cooking your meat. I'm going to turn this on a little bit. Whether it's pork chops, steaks, lamb. But well, you can tell on your hand a little trick I'm going to show you. If you push here, see how soft that is right here? That means it's rare. And the further and further and further you go in, with a different temperature. So I like mine like medium rare. So I'm going to put mine in a little bit. And that's about how much buoyancy I need. Not like that. Now this, all the way tight, cup, that is well done. That's how you can tell if your meat is well done. I don't do mine that way, and I actually had to get my parents out of having their meat in that way. And they love it so much more because you can actually chew the meat instead of taking 10 minutes for one bite of steak. Who does that? There's a lot of people that do it. But I understand it because you just want everything to be cooked absolutely well. I just like to move the oil around. I don't touch the lamb whatsoever. Just move that around a little bit. And also the good thing about slapping seasoning, it's an after seasoning too. You can do it while you're cooking or when it's almost done. But I like to coat the sides a little bit more. And I do need a tad bit more oil. See that? I'm hoping you can hear the nice sizzle from everything that's happening. These beautiful pieces of meat. Now with lamb, they come in different sizes. You can use them as an entree. You can use them as an appetizer. It just depends on how you want these to be displayed or how, what part of the meal you're doing for, the, for your cooking. And one of the beautiful things, beautiful things 
that it does not take long whatsoever. Once you get this nice crust on the bottom, you're golden. So this is actually the second one that I put in. This is a little thicker, so I gotta stay a little bit longer. But we're gonna look, I'm left-handed, so I gotta do my right hand now. See this crust just formed already. Look at that. Let's get this one. This is actually beautiful too. And when it comes to this side, actually turn down a little bit more. Push these over. So there's just flavor all in this pan. At the bottom is crust. So we're going to deglaze just slightly. And I'm going to use my Worcestershire sauce to deglaze some more. And then toss my asparagus in right now. And we're gonna season it with some more slapping. Asparagus is almost like a go-to for me, actually, because I, I just love asparagus. And we all know that sometimes when you have your asparagus, there is a little, there might be a little scent when you use the bathroom. So if you don't want that, what I do recommend is white asparagus. With the white asparagus, there will be no, no after smell whatsoever. Ah, this is looking beautiful. A little bit more oil for the asparagus. And I have a nice little trick that I'm going to show you to share this as well. See the juices from the lamb? Make sure it goes down to the asparagus so you can get all that flavor that was in there. The one thing about me and my asparagus. I don't like it to be like limp and just almost flaccid. I do like a little texture and crunch to it. So when I'm holding it, it's still standing up. That's what you're looking for. That's what I look for in asparagus. That's what you should typically look for in your asparagus. And it still hasn't even been that long yet for cooking this. Definitely push down on this lamb right here. And it's not giving me too much bounce back. So this is actually ready. You got the nice little crust on this side. So I like to have any meat that I cook, chicken, steak, anything. I love for it to just rest. And that's what we're going to have our lamb doing right here is resting. This one is a tad bit more time. So we have our asparagus here still cooking. I want to give you an example of what I mean like this. Before it was like really, really stiff. So you have a little bounce in it. So that means it's almost ready as well. Like I said, this is not a dish that takes long at all. So I'm going to turn off the heat. To add. Sorry. Just a tad bit of water. That's what's going to give it the steam. While this is resting, I feel like one of the main important things when you're doing your vegetables, especially asparagus, is to add that acidity to it. So I got my lemon and I roll it out because this is what get all the juices just flowing inside that lemon. 
because you know it's usually hard and stiff. And if you cut it when it's hard and stiff, you're not really going to be able to squeeze out all the juice. But today, we're going to be able to squeeze every single juice out of this. I like to cut my hand too, so I don't get any seeds in here. This is actually what's going to set everything off. Beautiful. So we can stop cooking it. We're going to go ahead and prepare this out. And let that go. I'm not going to get rid of the flavor in here. There's still a little bit of flavor. We can add a little bit more oil. And Worcestershire sauce. And just a little bit more lemon in here. And this is going to be like a little sauce that's going to go on top of our asparagus. Actually, the lamb and the asparagus. Of course, you always want to taste. Oh, that's good. But I can add a little bit more seasoning to it. Which I shall. Of course, the slapping. Because this is all about flavor, and that's what we always want. It's a nice flavor. People eat with their eyes first, they look at the dish and like, oh, this is beautiful. But afterwards, you better have some nice taste and flavor to it. Because where I come from, someone will talk about you. They're like, it looks good. But uh, I don't know. You could add a little bit more of this. Mm. That's actually it right there. So actually, we can actually start plating at this moment. Let's clear things out. Typically, when I'm plating a dish, I like to make like a nice little bed. So the asparagus that I have is going to be the bed for my lamb. There we go. And you can put as much or as least as you want on here for your bed. Since I'm in love with lamb, I love to just showcase it. A lot of people, maybe you can eat a lot, maybe you can't. And I said it's the finishing seasoning as well. And there's nothing wrong with sprinkling a little on the plate to add a little color to it. And of course, last but not least, Everyone likes that money shot. And the money shot is usually the nice drizzle that's on there. One thing we do oh, is waste nothing. 
So let's get another piece of lemon, thin and cut. Just something to brighten it up, to make it look just beautiful, to make it just pop. This is our dish. So we have basically pan seared lamb, pan seared asparagus. We use Worcestershire sauce, spicy mustard, steak seasoning, slapping seasoning, and a garlic seasoning. And this it's just a quick and simple meal that anyone can make. It takes no time at all. We still have time to chit chat, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Most important thing, clean the station. I'm, uh, I keep looking at it, and I just want it so bad. Matter of fact, let's see what it looks like. I want to bring this piece of lamb right here. This is probably going to be my favorite piece. So we can just see how it's beautifully cooked on the inside. It's right here. This is actually a perfect medium rare. Look at that. You can see the juice still on there. And the, the reason we let lamb rest or our meat rest, because if you cut it once it's hot, all the juice and flavor is just gonna drip out and just come out. But when you let it rest for a little while, all of it just soaks on the inside and just stays there. And that meat just, the juice and flavor just marinates within the meat. You know what? You know it's good when you have to pause and you just go. You think about your whole life, what's been happening, the good, the bad, the food. It brings your whole life together. This is actually what it's doing for me. It's bringing everything into perspective. And I'm a, oh my God, I'm so good. So a piece of information about me, I'm a military brat. So my dad was in the army, traveled all over the world. I really don't have a home because the military just moved us everywhere. But it taught me to enjoy different food because I graduated high school in Germany. I lived in Europe, I was in the UK. So I was able to develop my palate. But the point of this is whenever we went back home to the States, to the United States, Oh my God, it was always on holidays. Like my grandmother, my aunts, just family members will always have a big meal because we're going around Christmas or Thanksgiving or when we come, they're just cooking anyway because they grew up in the country. A whole spread of food. And I noticed that the kitchen was the hub of everything. No matter what's going on, people can be arguing this way, that way, or just having a good time. No matter what, when you get into the kitchen, Everyone is happy. Everyone is in there tasting the dish, seeing what's going on, having conversation over the table. And that's what I want to have happen with the show, to have the whole kitchen vibe. Because that's what we're looking for. We want you to feel comfortable. Ask questions. This is like a home, home type of show. So, hey, Chef Eric, how do I make this? How do I make that? You can always put a suggestion, and I will always give suggestions, give that feedback. Because that is what we want for kitchen vibes, and that's what we're giving. But let me tell you a bit of how I got into cooking. So before I was a chef, I was a systems engineer, meaning I was on IT, sitting behind a desk all day, just typing away. But I knew something was missing. I knew I needed to do something because I'm, I'm more of a hands-on person. Like I, I'm a dog trainer as well. I just like to have my hands on and everything, and I'm prior military. So I was always cooking for friends or cooking for myself, self-taught chef, by the way. And I went to YouTube University, never went to a culinary school. 
but YouTube, I looked up recipes, watched my family, watched my friends. And later on, I was like, this is what I really want to do. So I finally got my good my my break. And that was when I went to Chicago and cooked for a friend of mine. And he put me on and I got to cook for the cast of Empire. So like Taraji, Terrence Howard. And I knew that's exactly what I want to do. And when I got my first contract from them, I went back home and quit my job because I got to work in my passion. One of the things we want to do is work in our passion, whether it's full time, part time or just a hobby, something to just break up the monotony of life. And that's what I do with my food. And that's how I loved trying different dishes. And the lamb is an example. I didn't I didn't grow up eating lamb. It was like steak and chicken. So I'm telling you, it was from the country. So I had a uh, chitterlings which you, we all know what chitlins are pig feet and i thought it was fun to eat all these things and it is because that's how they grew up so i got to see what part of their culture was and i could tell you a good example of what people what i've done in my life as a growing up a lot of people haven't done so my grandmother and my grandfather they raised chickens in their in their backyard they raised chickens um duck all that but a fun time for us was when we came from the States, like I said, my father was in the military, we came back to my grandmother, she, she would cut the heads off the chicken and then we would go around chasing, really, literally, the chicken with his head cut off. So we did that. And that was something that I grew up doing, thinking that, you know, everyone else did. And I told people about it, like, you really chase chickens? I was like, I absolutely did. And that's how I think that I can become in tune with some of the food. So what they did, they didn't kill or sacrifice just for fun. It was to be put food on the table. And that's how I look at a lot of our resources. Now, if I had the time and everything to just do my own dishes and, you know, have my own meat and grow my own vegetable in the farm, that is something that I would really love to do. Because I know for one thing, it's going to be healthier. I could self-sustain, but that's what I want to do. So we'll be back. Stay tuned. Kitchen Vibes. I'm Chef Eric Marshall. Oh, this is what I'm talking about. I can't stop thinking about this lamb. With competitors. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm very calm under pressure. I just what are you doing? I'm making some delicious food for you. <laughs> <laughs> this. This is like the hardest competition probably ever in top history. Eric is very ambitious. Aesthetically, he looks flawless. More experience, I think. Absolutely. He knows what she's doing, but you gotta act like you want this. If you're not acting like you want it, go away. And that means, Eric Marshall, you are the chopped champion. Congratulations. <laughs> knows what tricks I might have up my sleeve. I'm ready, Martha. Got sleeves too. <laughs> <laughs>energy kicked in. Now it's time to get you some. Visit drinkvplus.com. 
I used to watch BET, MTV, VH1. Now I watch Tempo, Soca, Calypso, Reggae, Dance Hall. Don't stall, better get tuned in to the Tempo. Don't have cable, they got an app. Go to your app store, download that. Whether it's tourism, cuisine, or the social scenes, if it ain't Tempo, it's a wrap. Who got the Caribbean views? Tempo. Mr. Vegas in Caribbean news. Tempo. You trying to cook Caribbean food? Tempo. You know they got the music videos too. Tempo. Who got the Caribbean views? Tempo. Mr. Latest in Caribbean news. Tempo. You trying to cook Caribbean food? Tempo. You know they got the music videos too. Tempo. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm Eric, Chef Eric Marshall. This is our first launch of this cooking show today, Kitchen Vibes. Loving it. Um, I just like to sit and talk. Got to have a little bit of rum. But yes. Oh, one thing. I want you guys to tell me, after you cook this meal, I will actually put up and show you all the ingredients and how the direction is to make this meal here. Um, I want everyone to try it, taste it, see what you love about it, and um, just give your feedback. And just talk to me. Let me know how you love the dish, what you want me to, to cook next, or I'm going to have to have a segment where I actually have other people on the show with me teaching because I don't know everything. I want to know how to cook a lot of Caribbean dishes, a lot of dishes just in general anyway. You never stop learning. You always keep going in life because that's what I do. I will ask for help. Never be that stuck up that you cannot ask for help for something because that's how you get to where you need to go in life. And that's what I want to happen. But um, we did not taste the asparagus yet. So I'm going to need to get a fork. And we're going to taste this asparagus. I want you to see how beautifully it is cooked. See, it's not just, oop, <laughs> it's just not just limped all the way out. But you have this great cut, great, great flavor to it. That was beautiful. It was delicious. Thank you for tuning in. Um, thank you for always tuning in. And I want to tell you where you can actually catch the shows at. Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, Android TV, Roku, Temple Networks on cable TV, our TV network, and on the radio, WSCX Bloomberg Radio. So I want you all to tune in, share it, actually tell all your friends about it, because we want to make this one of the best shows and what's a homey like an easy feel for everyone to watch and just relate to with our shows. So I just love what I'm doing. <laughs> we always just continue to do it. One thing about food, do, food, it does get stuck in your teeth, and it's okay because you guys are family. I'm family to you as well. But we also, I will actually also be back in the Virgin Islands December 10th. We have a very big event going on, but you'll hear about that more. You'll hear about it on the website. We're all going to talk and just, you know, have a family affair. It's a family situation because I still need to explore the Virgin Islands a whole lot more. And I hope you'll be able to explore it with me. We're also going to have this like a, a crab scavenger hunt. Now, that is something that I really look forward to when I get back to the Virgin Islands. And that's something that I definitely cannot wait for because this is something that I've done with my grandfather before he passed. We used to go crabbing like all the time, get a nice little piece of chicken, drop it in the water, 
to slowly pick it up. When we feel that pinch, we can feel that weight distribution that's different. Slowly pick it up, have our net, grab the, the crab out of the water. We get back like two dozen or so blue Maryland blue crabs. Oh, and that's going to bring me to probably one of the next recipes that I do. I need to show you how to make my crab cakes. Now, this is something that you would die for. And the slapping seasoning is like one of the main ingredients that I use for my uh, my crab cakes. Like I tell you, this goes on everything. And you actually can find this on my website, www.chefemarshall.com. And the knife that I used earlier, that's also my knife brand as well. But thank you for tuning in. Kitchen Vibes, I am the chef, Chef Eric Marshall. I want to see you next time. And don't forget to tune in because I want to see you. And I'm sure you want to see more dishes. Thank you.